This is The Future of Money, a podcast where we hope to educate and get educated about the new world of blockchain and digital money. And my name is Eric Denboer, and I will be your host. Hi, and welcome back to The Blockchain and the Future of Money. Today, uh, I have with me Sarah and Vivian, and we are going to talk a little bit about women in the blockchain space. So I'm going to start with you, Sarah, real quick. That's okay? Of All course. Right. Sarah, you you were dabbling a little bit with uh, with algorithms and stuff like that. But before we go into all of that, mm-hmm. please tell tell us a little bit who you are and what you do. Absolutely. So, um, kind of got my start in the space back in 2016, 2017. Heard of this thing called Ethereum, and you know, just was really interested. Kind of at the time, was studying um, biology, psychology. Really interested in neuroscience. Kind of how people work, how the world works, how ecosystems interact with each other, and kind of looking at the blockchain and how all of those blocks connected all of a sudden just made a lot of sense for me. I'm like, wow, the storage of data, the you know transaction of currency, everything just kind of clicked in a different way. That was kind of outside of the scope of what I was doing at the time, um, but just was super interesting. And so, you know, bought a little Ethereum, had no idea what I was doing with it. And then a couple years later, um, got involved on with a protocol called Holochain, Um, And that's kind of where I got my start. So I now run marketing um, and product strategy for a company that kind of does blockchain infrastructure um, and have been, you know, diving really heavy into Web3, DeFi um, is something that's very close to me, stablecoins specifically, um, and also decentralized science. So DeFi, decentralized finance, right? Yes. So Algorand, this, how did you get your feet in that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the company that I'm working with now um, actually received a, a pretty nice size grant from Algorand to build a um, DEX, a decentralized exchange, um, on their protocol. So essentially what we're kind of trying to do, it's called Cables, Cables Finance. Um, it's currently in Testnet, launching in Mainnet later this month. Um, oh, cool. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're um, going to look it up. Yeah, but essentially kind of doing foreign exchange on chain. So really focusing on the stablecoin market. Um, we work really closely with BRZ, for example, um, and kind of trying to bring on more in Latin America. Um, and really just kind of the whole, you know, why we have blockchain is taking out that middleman and the intermediaries yeah. um, in finance. So like I said, kind of focus more on like foreign exchange on chain. There's kind of a, you know, still some very antiquated and outdated um, structures and systems that exist uh, in that space. So it's the problem we're trying to tackle, and Algorand was really excited about that. Um, when we decided to launch, I uh, kind of brought that to them and then have been working with them ever since. Awesome. <coughs> I, I do have a question. Uh, when you started getting into this space, where did you start looking for your materials? How, how did you educate yourself? Because, you know, yeah. if you're talking 2016 or even before that, you know, when I started 2014, there was nothing out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I started the first, you know, blockchain meetup group here in Fayetteville uh, 2016. And I, I think I was educating them more than they were <laughs> educating me. But uh, where where did you start finding your materials and had to, to understand how it worked? So I all think it started with Reddit at the time. I have been a big Reddit stan from the beginning. Just it's a great way to crowdsource information and so I think I stumbled across something when I was like very um, young at the time uh, trying to figure out you know financial literacy as a whole and then I think that kind of got me down the rabbit hole of cryptocurrency I think I was more like that plug for me was definitely the currency instead of blockchain itself Um, but then kind of stumbled into it I think reddit was my main source of education and then trying to google you know find different articles and then um, I kind of went more of that, like I said, crowdsource information route, then focusing on founders, which I kind of regret, and, you know, Vitalik, and getting into um, who actually started these chains and these There's blockchains. Chains, yeah, yes, exactly. yeah, but yeah. Um, definitely was more of the, the currency side of things. <laughs> did, you, did you have, and I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. ask both of you, yeah. did you guys have a, a, a time where, because I think the majority of people start in this space with the cryptocurrency, and then from uh, at a certain point you, you reach this like, wait a second, what is this blockchain thing that is behind all of this? Do you remember that moment? Um, I think for me, it was when I started working on the the protocol level, kind of made more sense to me. And then ever since then, I know we've kind of talked about it previously, but there's, you know, the currency side and the blockchain side, and now kind of Web3 is a mix of both. But um, I think there's an entry point for everyone is either 
it, for a lot of people that I've talked to is either the currency or the blockchain. And so I think it took me working on more of a protocol level to actually care deeper about blockchain. Year? Do you, do you say, oh, it was Year, 2016 uh, or it was 2018? Or? That was probably end of 2018, early 2019. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. It interested me before, but I yeah, didn't care enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any idea of blockchain and what it could do. So everything started with Bitcoin. I started reading what blockchain could do with Bitcoin. Then I joined my master program. I read a book from a professor and I was like, wait, wait a minute. This technology can be used in companies, can be used in environment, in metaverses, in credentials. I don't know. It's, it's well, amazing. So, 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 so who are you and what made you interested in this? Tell me a little bit about you. Okay, I am from Latin America. I am from Colombia. Um, I joined my master in information system because I, I wanted to do data and I wanted to do, I wanted to learn a little bit of coding, but it's also stay in the business yeah. uh, field. And through my, through summer, I had a professor, Dr. Lassiti, she was a professor yeah, in yeah. blockchain. And I read her book and it was amazing and it opened my eyes like this is going to be the future. So right now I am taking the blockchain as a concentration. I'm working as a graduate assistant at the Blockchain Center of Excellence. And every time there is like a, an event, I try to get involved. So, um, so you're not a student. You're actually a, a graduate assistant. Then. Yes, and I am I, both. I am a student and a graduate oh, oh, assistant. You're, bo you're both. How do you like it? I, I love my job because I have the... In my job, I'm still learning, and yeah, I like yeah. to be a student. I think so. we're still learning, all of us. Yeah, I mean, we this all is such a new space. Learning. So, um, yeah, the classes there. I, I've had a little bit of interaction with uh, with Mary and and th those guys up there because uh, one thing uh, that I've been helping with is that you know uh, teaching the blockchain fundamentals. You know, but um, so what what. When would you say that you get interested? Did you go from cryptocurrencies into blockchain too, or? Before the program, I started learning by myself what blockchain was, and everything I found was about cryptocurrency. So I didn't uh, dig yeah, that much into that. Was like, okay, is the technology behind Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Then when I started learn, when I went to class and I read Professor Lassiti book, yeah. I realized that blockchain is actually being used. In other spaces, yeah, in other besi spaces too. besides in, cryptocurrency, exactly in, in other in other use cases, so to speak, right? So um, I, I had a follow up question, but I forgot about it. Uh, uh, yes, uh, no. Well, let, let's continue. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll remember. I, I didn't. I don't know how to formulate it. Okay. So we're we're we're, we're talking to, about women in this space because the thing is that when when I uh, when I'm out there talking about blockchain, uh, you know, and have uh, uh, meetings or, or speeches about that, I noticed there's a lot of uh, men in mm -hmm. this space. But I did some research on that a little bit. I was surprised, actually, because it's, although there's more men, but it's only 64%. And that means that there's at least 40% women, which I think is kind of high for being in, in this space and so new. So what do, you, what do you guys feel about that? Was that as investors or do you remember, like was it no, like this, this was investors? Just, or? Where they, were, they were talking about uh, people in the blockchain mm. space. You know, we, we can talk about everything from YouTubers that talk about cryptocurrency block space, uh, blockchain. Uh, we can talk about investors. We can talk about, they, they were talk, this was just a big umbrella and mm. they said 60%. Because if you look at investment, if you not just take that portion, you're going to notice that there is way much more men in that yeah. space. Mm -hmm. you know, and if you were talking about uh, programmers, you know, then you're going to quickly notice that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's more guys. But in the blockchain space, and I have been following this for years now, and I have noticed, one of the things that I've noticed is that women are coming out there and they're just grabbing and they say, I can do this too. You know, you have excellent YouTubers. Uh, I, I have a couple of women we can talk about a little bit later, but excellent women in the YouTube space, they're so good. And also in the financial aspects. And what are your thoughts about that? I think there are women in the space, but I think they don't get the same recognition as guys do. So I was doing also a little bit of research, and I found that last year in December, just 5% of the entrepreneurs in blockchain, in crypto, were men. I mean, went women. Women, yeah. 95% were men. Like, that's incredible. Also, like in uh, Forbes, uh, the wealthiest um, people from crypto. 19, 19 of those lists are men. 
Yeah. Zero women. There are no women. But yeah, we, and we, every event th that, that I go, that is the best again. Yeah. Right, okay, and every go. event that I go, the majority of people are men. Mm -hmm. In the startup weekend, how many of the women were there participating? Four, five. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. So maybe the the numbers that I was reading is misleading them. I think there are women but somehow they don't participate or, no, or not as much. Because what blockchain is, is like um, finance and technology merge, right? Mm -hmm. And both are fields that are recognized for being men-dominated. Men technology, yeah. Yeah. programming, coding. Yeah. Blockchain yeah. started, from its roots, it has been male-dominated yeah. because it started um, between... PC gamers and yeah. the cyberpunk community. Yeah. These are male communities. So when women are starting, when women are going to start getting involved in this, I feel that the opportunity for women in blockchain is probably communicating, teaching, mm -hmm. learning, and taking this information and communicating in a language that is clear for people to get the scope of blockchain bigger, to get the community bigger. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, know. Yeah. And your thoughts? I mean, I agree. I think it's it's interesting, too, because, again, there's kind of the investing side, the currency side, and the blockchain side. And I feel like you probably do see people who are interested in the technology and the systems maybe more than the investment side. Um, I feel like in my field and who I've been around and different companies that we've worked with, I do see some women. But I feel like we also aren't afforded the opportunity to necessarily be vocal. I think it kind of goes back to some like very systemic issues that, you know, plague women, unfortunately. And I think it just, even if, you know, we're the smartest people in the room and at a conference or anything like that, I feel like women, unfortunately, have to basically validate and hyper-validate what they do, yeah. their education level, you know, how long they've been in the space, all of that kind of stuff. Um, is it's, under a much more watchful eye. Yeah, it's a little bit of stigma in there. Yeah. But I, I have to throw something in there, though. Since, since I am involved in, I'm heavily involved in Cardano, and I sit in some of the, the meetings and, you know, uh, the Catalyst and all that kind of stuff. When I go to these Zoom meetings, there will be, let's say, 200 people in the Zoom meetings. I can tell that there's a huge portion of that that are women. Also, I have noticed that because I'm, I'm, I'm working a little bit with people in Africa, And uh, uh, I, I have a woman that I work with uh, in, in uh, Botswana. Her name is Ala Kanani. And, and uh, it's called the Satoshi Center. You can look it up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, there's quite a lot of women involved in, uh, in those communities over there. And actually, almost overwhelmingly, because I noticed that, that the majority of programmers, when it comes to uh, countries like uh, India or Africa and stuff like that, There is a huge portion of women. So I'm going back to my 60%. Maybe that is that we are, that is a, you know, the, the global. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Are we talking about the whole world? Or are we talking just the United States? I have to agree with you that there's a lot of stigma here in the United States, particularly for women. You know, they have to prove themselves and prove themselves again. Maybe they don't have to do this as much when you are in. Europe, for instance, there, there's a different culture there, obviously. And in Africa, you know, the, <laughs> I am, every time I talk to these people, I'm just completely mind blown. It's like, man, wh why aren't you bigger on the, on, on the <laughs> market? Because you guys are brilliant. But uh, what are your thoughts about that? <laughs> uh, but the rest of uh, Colombia, for yeah. instance, how do, you, do you, how do you feel that women are presented in the blockchain space there, or do they even know about When blockchain? I was in Colombia, I never heard about blockchain. Never. Through my university, nobody ever talked about blockchain. The first time I heard about blockchain was here. And What? actually, that was another of the points why I'm producing blockchain, because I would love to learn as much as I can, go back and try to educate people. Because yeah. if it's true that blockchain is going to be the, it's going to redefine the global financial system, it shouldn't be biased. It shouldn't be just made by US or just man should like no, no, be no. diverse and include everyone yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah i will i would love to go back and well, teach the, and the biggest beneficials for for the crypto or blockchain space are you know countries from south america or africa or places like that where they can implement it and you know take the ownership uh, i really like the fact that you know the whole ownership thing is that it, it gives it actually empowers women in a mm. way mm -hmm. i think there's a little uh, Actually, what you were saying, 
So women are not public present in blockchain, right? Yeah. They're, you're not seeing women as the big entrepreneurs as guys are or getting wealthy by crypto as guys do and they show their faces. Uh -huh. But you said there are women and blockchain is supposed to be inclusive, right? Like when you are in crypto, you don't have your name. You have a code, you have a set yeah, of numbers. Yeah. So who knows if that is a boy or if that is a girl. Women could be there, but they just don't don't get the recognition as they do because they don't put their faces out there. Yeah. Why do they put why do they they don't put their faces publicly? Because I don't maybe know, it's a, maybe it's a better well we also we, we, well you know just look at history for instance some of the, the the most famous books that we read are written by women that are pretending to be men so you know maybe there's a similarity in there but I have noticed that for instance if you go on Discord or something like that and you would just see you know a couple of letters or something and there would be an avatar or, or an image that is a could be anything, right? So you don't really know who, who that person is behind, but when they write things in there, you see, oh, that's a brilliant person. So uh, maybe there's a, a form of anonymity in there that Yeah, helps. like what is behind? Why do they have to, why don't they, don't they say, I am a woman and look at my face and I want to be here and I want the world to see me. Do they think they're not maybe smart enough or they don't think that there is a spot for women in technology in general? Do, do you think know. it's a cultural thing too? Because, I, I, again, I'm going back to Africa, you know, these women, they just flaunt with it. Hey, here I am, I am doing this, and yeah. this is my company, and I'm the head, hunt, you know, and stuff like that. Mm. What do you think? Um, I think, I mean, from even just experience, I think it probably is a cultural thing, and I think every, every place in the world is going to have a different opinion of women, different opinion of blockchain, politics, all of that kind of stuff. So from my perspective and, you know, the life that I've lived in the U.S., I feel like it is probably beneficial to be anonymous on if you're in Discord, if you if you can be interacting with other people, because instead of like, oh, like, look, it's a, a, a girl in our Discord server. It's like, oh, this person, to your point, is offering some really valuable insight. That's interesting. So, so my, my next question would be, so when you go into the space and you say who you are, how are you received by the by the, um, the majority of men or men in the space? Would you say that it is some of them are really like, oh, I don't want to work with a woman, and other will be like, hey, cool, yeah, yeah, you need to. What is the overall feel? For instance, in, in school now, mm -hmm. when you when you are in these classes and stuff like that, how, how do the guys feel about that? It's going to surprise you, but somehow the majority of my class are women. Oh, I'm not surprised. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and so. But the, the guys that are in there, how, how, are, how do you feel that like the collaboration is? I, th I feel like equal. In my class, I feel equal. Yeah. And do you think it has to do with the, the fact that you guys are in the blockchain space, or you just think that, that that's the atmosphere of, of the, the class? Or, or is that maybe both? Maybe because we are at the same level, and they know we are at the same level. But as I was saying before, if we go to an event, when nobody knows what is your level and you are a woman, they're going to assume that you have been doing something else instead of like digging in your computer or yeah. trying to find information as they would do. So, but, and yeah. you've been in the workspace a little bit more, so, so how do you feel about that? I've been very fortunate with the companies that I've worked with are very inclusive, very collaborative, a lot of growth opportunity. I feel like that also probably, it's kind of like two sides of a coin, right? It's like either you're I don't want to say like devalued, but not taken seriously or kind of put into certain uh, categories in the workplace. Or because you're a woman, you do get some more advancements. And like that is a really precious thing to some people um, who recognize that like diversity as a whole. I think that's kind of, kind of what it boils down to. Um, if a company or a group of people can recognize that diversity is a positive thing and that all of those different perspectives um, lead to something better, then I feel like in general it's a more positive reception of women or any, I mean, really anybody. Like I said, it kind of just goes back to the diversity as a whole. So um, in the workplace, I feel like for the most part um, with the companies that I've worked with has been nothing but positive, but even going to a conference or something like that, then it, it kind of 
I feel like regresses a little bit and especially like you know get to the happy hours after our drinks are flowing and it's like well like how do you write a smart contract and it's like no no that's like not what I do that's not in my scope like yeah, sure yeah, we could yeah. talk about the generalizations but I feel like a lot of times unfortunately people will try to poke holes in your education level or what you're doing or anything like that um, just to kind of make a point and I, I don't want to say devalue and maybe that's how guys interact with each other too I can't really speak to that mm-hmm. um but so workplace has been great, we, but we I do, feel like, we do. yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like it, it just kind of depends on the group you're in too. Um, but fortunately I, I feel like the people that I've worked with are very positive and receptive, um, to women in the space. I think there is, there is a spot for everyone. Mm-hmm. I just wish girls would see that, Hey, this is not just a world of men. There mm-hmm. are spots for you also. There are spots yeah, for yeah. girls also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Join us. W- one of the things that I was thinking about is that actually, I, I think one of the reasons to, uh, and I have noticed this, you know, as I've been growing more and more into this space is that when we started and, and still it's a little bit like that, but when we started, we were looked at outcasts. Mm. And when you look at an out, you know, uh, you're, you're in the, the crypto space and the fake money or, and or, so are you a crook or, you know, that, that, that feel. So the people that are in there, they hurdle together. And then when you do that, it doesn't matter if you are a, uh, a, a woman, a man, black, white, Asian, uh, death metal, or whatever, <laughs> right? You, you kind of hurdle together, and that is the feel that I still have a little bit because it's still questioned. You know, you still have the big finance and all that stuff that is very much against you. And when I go to my, my Zoom meetings or or even conferences, you, you feel like, hey, I'm going to hang out with my people. So what do you, th- do you, do you think there's some, some truth in that or? I do. I feel like there is truth in that. And it's, I, it also kind of, um, not to like bring the market into it, but I think it also depends on if you're in a bull or a bear and kind of where everything is. Cause back even in, you know, November, attending stuff then versus now I feel like is different because now you're kind of surrounded by the people who actually know the industry are like-minded in that way versus um you know just heard about board apes and got really into nfts and kind of like the meme coins and all that stuff which has its place I think and I think you know for global mass adoption eventually that's a great little strategy to have and brings in a lot of people but I think you also probably get I feel now yes I totally agree with you um that people are like that but what do you think well, you haven't been in here so so long, so you, yeah. you wouldn't know. My, my next question is, what, what do you think that women can bring to the blockchain space that maybe we men can't? What would that be? I feel like there's probably a lot. There's a lot that, uh, to exactly what you said, everybody has a place. And I think, um, you know, we women make up, what, 50 to 52% of the, 54% of the world population. And so I think that alone... Um, there's just a lot of women's issues in health and like decentralized science, what I was mentioning earlier, um, that I think, you know, you just don't have experience with, and that's what it comes down to. So I think expanding on, um, healthcare for women is one thing, uh, on the blockchain that I don't think has been tapped yet. I think healthcare is an emerging market in that space. Um, but particularly for me, I'm very excited, um, to see where that goes and kind of women helping women, um, just in general, I think even in education or, um, you know, exposure, investing, there's a lot of different, um, different places. And I think in general, uh, because it is kind of more of a male dominated industry, anything in STEM kind of historically has been um, more male dominated. So having somebody be able to talk to you and who you are, and probably a little bit more to your life experience than um, like maybe a male counterpart could. Um, And just kind of bringing them in, ushering everybody in. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, what women can do for blockchain, they can bring their presence, they can bring diversity, inclusivity. Um, as I was saying before, I think one of the skills that are, is being recognized as a woman skill, communication, mm-hmm. taking uh, building communities, yeah. um, teaching. Um, yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, there are d- uh, millions of different personalities, but there are sometimes certain core things that women are, are, are better on than men are, I, I personally think. And, you know, overall, I think just women are much better than men. <laughs> I, that's just my, my, my personal opinion. No offense. So uh, do you want to expand more on that or should we continue? Oh. I mean, I think it just goes back to it. And it's kind of, 
a weird juxtaposition too of you want to be recognized as a woman in the space and in technology and finance and all that kind of stuff. But I hope one day too that women will have a safe space with other women and women will have a safe space within the blockchain communities. But at the same time, you know, hopefully there will come a day where it's not like this huge disparity that um, we even necessarily need to talk about. It's just people in the space. And I think that spans back to the diversity part of what I was saying earlier of, you know, just as many people as we can have included in this is going to do nothing but better the space. And so um, hopefully eventually everybody will be recognized for just being a contributor and you don't necessarily have to segment um, and separate people. But I yeah. think there's something we have to change in the woman's thinking like, Yes, you can do it. You can join the technology field. You can. You're enough to do it. Because as I said, in Colombia, I never heard of this. I never been in the technology field. Never was in my mind because I don't know. I'm a girl. I always thought that my path should be I don't know, nursing, teaching. This is an stereotype, but down yes, there, yes. we are yeah. we are still um, uh, conservative. <laughs> so when yeah. you run your your uh, your podcast in Colombia, you know, <laughs> invite me. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll come. Okay. <laughs> How, how do you think that blockchain uh, can help uh, uh, women in the world? I mean, and I'm not just talking about them getting into the space, but uh, I, I have uh, some, of the, some of the folks that I meet, for instance, you know, women in Cardano. They're not talking about how can I get Cardano out to the women. They're also talking about how can the Cardano network or the blockchain eventually help women in poor countries or, you know, and they really focus on helping women. They're not just helping everybody. No, how specifically can I help women? Yeah, well, blockchain wants to bring the power back to the people, right? Mm -hmm. And women is a minority community. Yes, in, um, in very many places in the world, yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how blockchain can bring the power back to them. Give me an example. Let me think about it, you can answer first. <laughs> right, no, I, I completely agree. I think, um, and yeah, I, I think we could go even like higher level too of, you know, mass adoption of blockchain probably is gonna start when people don't even really realize that it's happening. Yep. Um, but back to what I was saying earlier, I think healthcare is something absolutely that, um, I, you know, I've been thinking and ideating on it lately, so that's probably why it's top of mind. Um, and also financial access, I think, is a huge thing, too. Um, I, again, can only really speak from my scope of living in the U.S., but just being able to, instead of, you know, let's say being tied to your husband's bank account somewhere and you can't, you know, invest in yeah. how you want to. And yeah. um, just the taking out that middleman, whether that's a bank, whether that's a person, anything like that, and just being able to invest in what you want and literally at the tip of your fingers. Yeah, I, like if you I have totally internet, agree. Then, because I yeah. do think that women almost there's a majority of women that are imprisoned by the men or can't even go to the bank and open a bank account mm -hmm. or something. But now you can actually, if you have a cell phone, you can go on in there and you can create your own you know, wallet in there and you can, even if you had just a couple of pennies, you can go in there. And, no, and if you're a smart woman, which <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming you are, then you can start investing and doing things in there and become free or maybe even start a company and then say that, hey, you know what, I just want you to pay me in these cryptocurrencies, uh, even create your own cryptocurrency for a while, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you on that, yeah. To expand just a little bit more too, I think kind of with that financial aspect, I think the emergence of DAOs has been really cool. Yes. Um, and also, you know, being able to, what I was speaking to earlier, like crowdsource, crowdfund, um, money ideas, anything like that. And even if that's like a, a women-led DAO or something like that. What just is a DAO? Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, but I think that there's a lot of opportunity to, um, for women to connect with each other in that way, or it doesn't have to be a DAO, but that's just, you know, on chain. I think people think of that really quickly. Um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of connectivity and financial freedom that blockchain will hopefully bring to women. There you go. That was my example. Oh, that's your <laughs> example? Just saying, yeah. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, similar like minded. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, maybe you guys are talking about Speaks to the connectivity. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, role models real quick. Who would you say is a role model for you? Oh, that's a great question. I had to think about this one a little bit. So Mary Camacho is the CEO of Holochain. When I was talking about earlier, the company that I worked for um, right out of school is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, 
very strong head on her shoulders. I think she understands the decentralized space and has been speaking to it for longer than I even knew blockchain was, you know, decentralized at any capacity. Um, so I would say her, she's run the company beautifully. Um, and then I'm blanking on her first name. I think it's either Kath, I think it's Catherine Gu or Christina Gu, but I think it's Catherine. Um, she runs CBDC and protocol for Visa. Mm-hmm. Um, she is also a huge role model, very in on kind of, you know, where do centralized banks meet blockchain and crypto and kind of uh, bridging that gap between the traditional finance and uh, decentralized finance. So I would say probably the two of them. And you? Well, I really admire my professor, Dr. Lassity. Yeah. I think she's a wonderful woman and she knows a lot. And I love how she sees blockchain. In, I feel like in her mind, blockchain is the way to change everything, to make things better when it's usable. Um, it can make things better and it can help people and it can empower people. So I love her mindset. Um, also, I admire Naomi. I'm probably going to send her last name wrong. Brackwell? Brackwell? Yeah, Naomi Brackwell. Brackwell, yeah. yeah. So she's, um, she's a journalist, and I have my bachelor in journalism, so she inspires me also. And she's present in, in the majority of conference about blockchain worldwide, and she's constantly on US TV talking about blockchain. And yeah, she's, she's actually a YouTuber, and you guys should check her out. Naomi Brackwell, I think she's from Australia, if I'm right. Mm-hmm. But she is on, on different kind of uh, news outlets and everything. Uh, so my turn. Yeah, sure. Uh, my, my, my role model as a woman, I have to say, is Ada Lovelace. Because the more I have learned about her uh, and understand, I, I, I think we can say that she is the woman behind computers. I strongly recommend you guys out there, and also you too, if you haven't read about or watched, uh, whatever, read read about her. If you haven't, look her up and and look at the history behind her, and then you will understand why I'm saying this, because without her and her thinking, we might not have had computers in the same way we have today. With that said, I thank you guys so much. It's been super fun, and uh, maybe we can do this again. Definitely. And for you guys, we will see you at the next episode. Thank you so much. Goodbye.